This is the second review of the Boblov T5 body camera. This video takes a look at the user manual, the camera body, and goes through some of the menu features to give you an overview if you're considering buying. Let's first have a look through the manual. There's 16 pages which give a good introduction. The information on charging is a bit misleading. It says there are three ways to charge the batteries, but it really only states two ways. I'll come back to this shortly. Replacing the battery is straightforward, but when installing the SD card which sits underneath the battery, it says that the retaining clip pops up automatically. It doesn't pop up. You need to lift up the clip to insert the card. All the buttons and lights on the camera are shown in the structure diagram. And the next three pages give a good explanation of what the buttons do. It takes about 15 minutes to get familiar with operating the buttons. Then it explains the layout of the LCD screen. It's not a touch screen, so you need to use the buttons to navigate menus. More pages on video recording, taking photos and recording audio only. Then at the end it shows you all the camera parameters or features. There's not much explanation here, so I've played with the camera enough and contacted Boblov Tech Support to show you how some of these features work. Now to the camera. A bonus is that it comes with two batteries. One is already in the camera. There are two alligator clips. The small clip is best for attaching to a backpack or clothing. The large clip is for attaching to thicker objects. It has adjustable tilt angle with a solid feel to the positions. But you can't rotate the clip. At the front there are the infrared lights for night vision and you can easily get to the battery and the SD card under that. Along the right side is the button for taking photos while video recording and to turn on the IR filter, push to talk, and up and down buttons for selecting menu items. At the left is the video recording button, audio record, OK button for selecting menu items, and the power on off button. Along the top are lights for power on and recording. At the bottom is a soft rubber cover that protects the micro HDMI and micro USB ports. And the LCD screen which is explained quite well in the user manual. Unfortunately the button labels are really hard to read because they are coloured black on black. Also you need to push the rubber buttons in quite hard to use them. There are three ways to charge the batteries. You can plug the camera directly into your laptop, plug the charging dock into your laptop, or plug either the camera or charging dock into a power socket using an AC adapter. The camera doesn't come with an AC adapter, but I use my smartphone adapter and it works just fine. It takes just over two hours to charge for five hours use. With the default settings, you get music when you power on and off. You can disable this when you select Keytone Off. Switching on compression storage will reduce video file size down to almost half. When motion detection is on, the camera will start recording when there is movement in front of the lens. When the motion stops, the camera will stop recording after 11 seconds. Then there is a 6 second countdown that resets the motion detector. When Keytone is on, you get a beep when you press buttons. and you get a camera shutter sound when you take a snapshot. The final browser mode, which is obviously misspelled here, lets you change the display of files in the video and photo file screen from a file name listing 
to a thumbnail image listing. The device ID is seven numbers and letters that can be changed and is displayed on images and videos. Officer ID is six numbers and letters. Unfortunately, there is no way to turn off the display of these IDs or the date timestamp on the recorded images. That's the official word from Boblov Tech Support. You would need to crop out the bottom part of your video to remove these. For the password, the first time you use the camera, you need to enter the default password of six zeros. Then you can select password on or off. The password can be a combination of numbers and letters. It's required when you connect the camera to your laptop to transfer files. So no one can view or download files unless they know the password. Stealth mode turns off all sounds as well as disabling the lights at the top. However, it still enables vibration if that's switched on. Voice broadcast will call out the police ID number whenever you switch on the camera. Police. Zero, 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 zero. Start the law enforcement. It will also tell you when you start and stop recording. For time broadcast, the time is read out on the hour. Or at least that's what Boblov Tech Support told me. I haven't got it to work. To sum up, Stealth Mode is definitely one of its best points. And enabling the password will prevent any files from being accidentally viewed or downloaded. However, the T5 doesn't have Wi-Fi, so live streaming isn't possible. And it's a drawback that you cannot disable the ID and timestamps along the bottom of the videos. The Bubble of T5 has some handy features. It would be a good second camera for auditing, but not for your main camera. I was disappointed by the permanent time and ID stamps, but having a recording resolution of 1296 pixels means you can record at the higher resolution and crop out the bottom part of the video down to 1080 pixels. Thanks to Bob Love Technical Support for responding to my questions. If you like this video, please support my channel and subscribe, comment and share. Thanks for watching.